Yo, what's up beautiful people of YouTube? Welcome to Dom's Media Zone. In today's video, I'm going to show you an overview and a tour of the YouTube Studio. So the YouTube Studio is a tool that when you start your own YouTube channel, you can use this to kind of monitor what's going on on your channel. It's a really great sort of reporting tool where you can see how each one of your videos does, when the people watch your videos, uh, how many views you're getting, how many likes and dislikes you're getting. So this is kind of like a tool for the content creators on YouTube that shows you a whole bunch of data and information that you can use to improve your channel and kind of make decisions going forward. You can see what videos are popular, what videos are not popular. It's a great tool to have and to check regularly on your YouTube channel. So this is still quite a new channel. I've got under 200 subscribers and I figured, you know what, let's go ahead and let me show you what my YouTube studio looks like, what the analytics look like, what the different tabs tell me and how you can get useful data and information for your channel from your YouTube creator studio. So if something like this interests you, do stick around and let the tour begin. Hey, what's up good people? Welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be showing you the YouTube studio overview and tour so that you can get an idea of what a new YouTube channel's analytics look like and how to navigate around the YouTube studio. So I'll show you each and every page and then at the end I will show you the analytics tab because that is a bit more in detail and a bit more lengthy but it's really really useful especially for new content creators or even if you're trying to start a new YouTube channel this is a tool you'll be using quite a bit and it can give you a a lot of good information about your videos. So without further ado, let's begin. So to get into YouTube Studio, you need to go and click in the top right hand corner on your YouTube icon and then click on YouTube Studio. Once you're in YouTube Studio, you'll notice on the left hand side, you've got a bunch of pages over here. Each one has its own things that it does. So by default, you'll be looking at the dashboard. Now dashboard, because it's selected, we can see all these things here on the dashboard. The dashboard is really useful to get a quick overview about what's actually happening on your channel. So it gives you your latest video performance. So this is the last video I've uploaded. It tells you how many views you've received and it also ranks it by views compared to your other videos. So you can see this one's doing really well. It was released only on Monday and it's already got 165 views compared to my other videos doing in the same amount of time. This one's really doing good. So this is a good way to see if your latest video is doing well or not. I've had a lot of videos that weren't doing well. Sometimes you get one or two views. Then you know, okay, well, people watching your channel maybe are not interested in those topics. Okay, on the dashboard, you've also got things like new achievements. This is pretty new. YouTube says yeah, it's still experimental. It just shows you what you've achieved on YouTube and when you've achieved it. Then you've also got the news tab here, which YouTube informs you about the new things that are coming out and what's happening. So for example, over here, you can see auto chapters are here and they briefly describe it to you and you can click see how it works. Then you've also got an overview of your channel for the last 28 days. So my total subscribers right now is 183. Now I've started this channel in November 2020 we're now in end of July 2021 so it's just over six months but I've been uploading videos consistently since about January so I've got 183 subscribers so it is growing it does take time and a lot of patience but I have noticed that recently it's been growing a lot quicker than before okay it also gives you a summary of your views for the last 28 days and a summary of how many watch time in hours combined so this is people watching your videos combined face to face if they took all the time that people watched your videos, this is how many hours they've watched it for in the last 28 days. It also gives you your top videos in the last 48 hours and your published videos. So here's like a shortcut, basically you can go to videos. But then this tab, this page here does exactly the same thing. It takes you to your content or your video. So I'll go over that just now. Also, if you scroll down, you've got things like your recent subscribers. So if you click see all, you can see everyone that's subscribed to you recently. Now, just to keep in mind, YouTube by default, when you set up a YouTube account, it will not show people that you've subscribed to their channel. So it will not show your name and your channel for everybody. It will only show if you activate that option in your settings. So by default, channels that you subscribe to will not even see that you've subscribed to them. Also, they got a thing called ideas for you where you can make like a channel trailer. They give you ideas 
ideas how to improve your channel uh, some known issues so if they're having issues right now they will report this to you on the dashboard and then you've also got something called the creator inside where you can go over and they basically give you advice and teach you things on how to be more creative and how to publish better content on youtube and in a nutshell that is the dashboard page the only other thing that to point out on the dashboard page is this is the page where you would go to upload your videos from so if i click here it's waiting for me to post a video now i did cover this i've got a whole video on just posting a youtube video i will put the links down in the description below and then also there's a button here where you can go live on youtube which i haven't used yet but this is what you could do to go live um i have not used that yet but maybe i'll cover this in another video all right and that's your dashboard page it's basically an overview and up next you've got your content page now this page is really really good because it's got every single video you've posted in order so this is the earliest video i've posted to the latest video that i've posted it tells you whether your videos are public or whether they're scheduled so the nice thing is when you're posting a youtube video you can actually schedule it to get released at a certain date and time of your choosing all right so this tells me also the date when it was published how many views i got how many comments i've got and also gives you the how many likes how many dislikes you got over here so you can see sometimes you do get dislikes on your videos do not be disheartened use it as a constructive criticism that maybe that video wasn't that great like you can see here i think i got six dislikes 17 likes so clearly some i did something wrong possibly in that video and i should probably just learn from those and read the comments what people say about that so this is kind of a useful tool to just get an overview of every single video that you've uploaded already now another cool thing is on here you've got these little icons if you hover over the video one is to edit so if i click on this button it will let me change the video title the description all this uh, things here like the icon and so on this is all covered in my video on how to create a youtube video but that's where you can easily access the edit button and also it's got the analytics page which we won't cover right now but we'll i'll show you a bit later on on the analytics tab and then also the comments so you can go directly to the comments which are also here on this page here and then also you can view your youtube video to see how it looks on youtube and then you've got other options such as download your video delete your video share a link promote and so on all right you can also filter your videos by title views visibility all sorts of different ways you can arrange your videos now up next you've got something called the playlists tab or playlists page and the playlists are very useful for somebody that posts a lot of videos but some videos are different to other videos so for example if i do a lot of tutorials on canon dpp4 i could create a playlist just for canon dpp4 but then i also like to do videos about microsoft and sound tests and reviews i do videos about my canon 90d and youtube gear and all sorts of things so you can create videos and then when you post your video you select under which playlist you want the video to go to now these are really handy because you can share them on your main channel page and people can access your playlist straight from there a little bit more about setting up your channel how you like it in the customization page later on right over here it also gives you the video count of how many videos you have in each playlist you can also edit your playlists or show them on youtube and then the next tab we've got the analytics tab but i'm going to skip that for now and we will come back to that if you're only interested in the analytics tab i will put chapters to that so you can skip on ahead to the analytics page only now the next tab we've got is called comments and this is really useful this is when people comment on your videos under this tab here i haven't responded you're going to see a whole bunch of comments from people People and it will show you everyone you haven't responded to so when you're starting out and when you're still new and you can manage responding to people I think it's really important that you do to kind of build that community help people out you know it, it is important to assist people wherever you can so here you'd go and you'd see all these comments that you haven't responded to and one by one you can just type your responses so that you don't have to skip to each video and look for the comments separately and then also over here you've got another button that says held for review this will hold any kind of suspicious comments that youtube thinks that might be inappropriate so if someone for example curses or uses swear words on your channel or on your video it will probably hold it for review and then you can choose to post it or not so this is a very useful little page to use and it saves you a lot of time up next is the subtitles page so youtube has like built-in automatic subtitles even though i don't post my videos with specific subtitles youtube just automatically puts english subtitles for me it detects your voice
voice, it's got a voice recognition built in and it creates subtitles from that, which is really handy. And I know that you can do subtitles in multi languages. So like, for example, over here, I've got subtitles in Dutch and English. I'm not a hundred percent sure why I've got it in Dutch. I'm assuming that someone watched it in the Dutch language and put on the subtitles and that's how these were generated. Pretty neat how it works and how it translates things. That's a really good feature of YouTube. Up next, you've got the copyright page and over here, basically you can submit any copyright claims that you want to make. So if somebody uses your video without your permission or does something, you can actually lay a copyright claim over here. I've never had to do this luckily, so I will not be using that for now. And then up next is the monetization page. So over here, it tells you how far away your YouTube channel is from being monetized. The requirements to become monetized on YouTube, you need 1000 subscribers and 4000 watch hours. So that's the minimum that you have to have before you can partner up with YouTube and start promoting adverts and start potentially earning money from your videos. So currently, as you can see, I'm on 183 subscribers out of a thousand. So it's got this little gauge to show me I've still got a long way to go and I'm on a thousand hours out of 4,000 required hours. So I still need 3,000, just under 3,000 hours. Once you are eligible to get monetized, they do send you an email and they say they will notify you. And I believe the process works that they send you an email. You basically have to fill something out and then they send you some kind of a code where you team up with the Google AdSense they, to confirm that it's you. You have to give them your account, your bank account details. And then once you confirm, they send you this code in the post and once you confirm that it is your account by entering that code in then you're activated but I do know that they also review your channel before you can get monetized so even though I meet this criteria if I'm eligible somebody will come and review your channel to see if there's no inappropriate things on the channel and if the content's not too repetitive and things like that so that's the monetization page over here up next we've got the customization page so this is the cool page where I've mentioned that you can actually customize what shows on your YouTube channel. So just to show you an example of this, I'm going to jump into my YouTube channel. All right, so now in the YouTube channel, and if I scroll down a bit, you'll notice over here, I've got this list called the popular uploads. So this will basically put my most viewed videos up front here. And then underneath it, it's got the upload. So this is all the videos I've uploaded in order. And then down here, you've got multiple playlists. So it's all the playlists that I have created, like the YouTube gear one, vlogging setups, Canon DPP4, and so on. To set this, up in the order which you wanted to show, you'd go to that channel customization page. So over here you can see featured sections. I've added popular uploads, uploads, multiple playlists, which is what we just saw on my channel. You can add other sections to this. So you can do like short videos, you can do upcoming live stream things, uh, created playlists. You can share different types of sections on your YouTube channel, which will show then when somebody clicks on your page. And then also here it gives you an option to create a trailer for people who haven't subscribed so I could possibly create a short video that when someone clicks on my channel, this video will pop up and tell them, hi, this is what my channel is about. If you've come to this channel, this is what you can expect to get. And this is where you'd create this kind of video. And then over here, it's got some featured video for returning subscribers. So this basically lets you highlight a video for your subscribers to watch. It won't be shown again for subscribers who have already watched it. So I, I need to learn more about this feature. I have not used it before. And then over here, you'll see you've got tabs as well. So this was the layout tab and then you've got your branding tab where you can put your picture your banner image and even a video watermark on your video so that if someone does download it somehow it will have your logo on it and then over here on the last tab you've got the basic info so these are things like a description of your channel which i should probably put some more effort into which i haven't done and then you've got like a channel url and then this one the custom url after you reach 100 subscribers youtube actually lets you put in your own custom url i create created a video on how to do this. I'll put a link down in the description as well. And then here it lets you add links to your channel description page and so on. You can even put your contact details in. I've got a generic email for Dom's Media Zone. So if someone wants to get in touch, I give them this email. Okay, and that's about it for the customization tab. And up next, you've got something called the audio library. Now I really like this little audio library because I'm not sure if you've posted any videos yet, but basically if you post a video and if you use some else's music like something that's copyrighted YouTube usually detects that automatically and if you don't remove that music from your video you can get a 
copyright strike. I believe that if you get three strikes, they can actually delete your channel or ban you, something like that. So YouTube actually gives you a free audio library where you can download a whole lot of free music that you can use in your videos that are not copyrighted by them and they allow you free use of this. Now this is really great because if you're struggling to find something, you can always come here. There's tons of it. You can see there's about 1,836 pages and it's nice because you can actually filter this out. So if I click on here and I click genre, for example, I can select what type of music or what type of song I'm looking for. I can even filter it by song length, by genre, by mood, all sorts of stuff. So let's say, for example, let's click on classical and say apply. So here we got some classical music. So to preview that, I would just click play. Now it's a minute 33 seconds. And if I wanted to download this, I just click on download audio track and then I can use the song in my video. Also, you've got a sound effects library, which you can use different sound effects. So for example, let's see, cartoon metal thunk, whatever that is, let's have a listen. Okay, I guess that was the metal thunk. So here you've got sound effects. Likewise, there's tons of pages here so you can filter and search for your sound effects. Okay, and over here, the last tab is called start. So this is if you uh, add a song to your favorites or basically give it a star, they'll appear here so that you can find them easily at a later stage. And that's all for the audio library page. And up next, we've got the settings page. So your settings page is basically your account or your YouTube studio settings. So this you're telling it what currency, what country you in. Here you've got the channel settings. So this is really cool because you can put channel keywords here. So basically tags that describe your channel. So I've listed everything I kind of do. Reviews, guys, DaVinci Resolve, film, comparison, and so on. DaVinci Resolve, anything that you can think that describe your channel goes here. Then you've also got advanced settings. So is this channel made for kids or not? You've got things like like uh, don't show potentially inappropriate words, you could block those out. You've also got a subscriber count. So do you want to show people how many subscribers you have and how many you don't have? You can tick and untick this. Now I had this thing unticked in the beginning. Somewhere I read that, you know, if you don't have many subscribers and people come to your channel, they'll think, oh man, this probably won't be good because it doesn't have any subscribers. So some people recommend hiding your subscriber count in the beginning, but eventually I thought, you know what, I'm going to just leave it on and I've left it on since then. Uh, then you've also got a setting that can disable interest-based ads. I've never switched that on. And then you've got feature eligibility, which should list all the features that you're eligible for as a new YouTuber. So basically, like, have you verified yourself and things like that? It will then allow you to upload custom thumbnails. If you don't verify yourself on YouTube, you will not be able to put custom thumbnails on your videos. So that's called a feature and that's where you can activate them. Now, up next, we've got the upload default. So this is if you're uploading constant videos, do you want a similar title all the time? Like, do you want to default, for example, Dom's Media Zone in each video and a specific description and so on, so you don't have to repeat it? I don't really use this because each of my videos is a little bit different. And then you've got things like permissions. So this is used if you say your YouTube channel gets really big, you grow tremendously, you're getting millions of views and you can't manage to respond to comments and just to kind of keep track of it all while recording videos, you would then set these up where you can give access to specific people to your accounts and you can even hire like managers, editors and viewers and all sorts of things to help you out with running your channel. Then up next, you've got something called the community. So you likewise, you can add moderators and uh, approved users and all sorts of things. You can even hide users here. So like you'll see, I've got two users here. So these are accounts that were posting links. Every time I posted a new video, they went and were uploading some links that took you to uh, let's say um, some not so children friendly websites. And so I decided, you know what, instead of just removing these links every time, I'm just going to hide these users. And once I've hidden them, you can't see the URLs anymore. Okay. And over here, you can also block words. So if you really wanted to, you could type a whole bunch of words that you want to block so that no one can post those words on your videos as a comment. And over here, the last tab is called agreements. So this is just your terms and conditions of your YouTube agreement. 
close that to come out of the settings that was all the settings for you and then there's also a last thing send feedback tab which isn't that interesting it's just basically if you want to send some feedback to youtube and finally we're going to get into the analytics tab right now so let's go ahead and click the analytics page right now the analytics page is super super cool and super important i love using analytics it tells me a lot about my channel and about the videos that i post so over here at first glance you'll see this gives you for the last 28 days so here in the top right hand corner you can actually set a date so for the last 28 days basically the last month how many views i got on all my videos so my views went up i got 5200 views more than usual which is excellent news means my channel's growing thank you very much guys thank you for being subscribing to my channel and for sticking it out also over here you've got your total watch time hours for those days and how many subscribers you received in these days and then here you got like a little graph with a timeline on it so here you can just hover over this and it tells you when you published what video so i've done a sound comparison video on the 5th of july then a week later i've done a how to create your custom url for your youtube channel and so on and so on and here you can actually see how your views went up and down and the nice thing here is you can actually change this and make it over a lifetime or over the last seven days you can control what information you want to see here so i'm going to make this let's see over a lifetime and as you can see here you can see these little dots are all the videos i posted so the very first one was november 23rd 2020 and then i didn't post until the 4th of january after which i was kind of consistently posting videos and then over here it actually shows you your views on the day so you can see i used to be getting like 30 views views 34 views that day was good 100 views and then it slowly grew the more videos i posted slowly slowly it started growing and it's still growing now which i'm really happy about because it shows me that i'm doing something right i mean not all my videos are good but some of them are over here it gives you the total watch hours total subscribers and if you scroll down it gives you why is this thing popping up if you scroll down it gives you your top videos in this period so in its lifetime so since i had this youtube channel my top video Video is my Canon BRE1 remote setup and this shows me how many views it got and it shows me the average view duration of this video so made mainly 50% which to be honest I thought was terrible but somewhere I read that that's kind of normal for YouTube and if I think about it some of the videos I watch on YouTube I also skip a lot and then once I get what I wanted from the video I'll usually just end the video and so here we got like um, all the statistics the top few channels uh, the top few videos were basically these ones and then you you can scroll down further and see your worst ones these are your top 10 so this is just the analytics overview page now i'm going to show you quickly all these other tabs and then we're going to come back because if you click on the see more button here this is where you can get information in detail so i'm going to come back to this part there's a lot of information here i'm going to try go over this quite quickly just so you get an idea of what's where and how you can use it but before we do that let me just finish showing you these tabs over here so the next one is called reach so the reach tab basically shows you where you are reaching people from how you are reaching these people are you doing a good job at reaching certain people so i'll explain a bit more in detail so impressions is how many times has somebody seen your youtube thumbnail pop up on their screen so my thumbnail for my videos was shown 178,000 times out of those times what's the percentage that somebody's actually clicked on that thumbnail so 6.3 percent of the times all in all the total is say 16,000 views from these 178,000 impressions so I'm getting a click rate of 6.3% which means that 6.3% of the people that see my thumbnails actually click on them the rest just scroll past which is a good indicator and I heard the norm on YouTube is around 5 5 is a good average so I'm quite pleased that it's on 6.3 if I'm being very honest okay this little graph here also tells us about the impressions so how many times on this day have people seen my YouTube thumbnails and then if I scroll a little bit down you've got your traffic sources so this is where is your traffic actually coming from where are your viewers coming from suggested videos so this is the percentage of viewers from suggested videos so if for example someone else has a youtube video and it ends and right at the end my video becomes suggested as the next one they watch that's where my main amount of traffic is coming from uh, right under is the youtube search so that's people searching in youtube for different videos got 31 percent over here and then also here's some impressions and how they led to 
to watch time, which is kind of the same thing, but just a summary and how much watch time you got from those impressions. And these are the dates that it's available. So this is 259 days. And then if I scroll down a little bit more, you've got your external traffic sources. So these will be like your search engines, which search engines that people use. If you click see more, you'll get that big data graph that I showed you earlier, which we are going to go over in a second. So I'm just going to go through this quickly because it's explained in more detail on that other data tab. All right. Also here, you got your traffic sources. So how's your playlists doing? Which playlists are bringing in the traffic? And then you've also got YouTube search. What are people searching for to find your videos? This is really cool because you can actually see, and this will give you ideas when posting your next video, how to structure your tags. You can see how people are actually searching on here. And then also from suggested videos, which video videos by other YouTubers are suggesting my content. So if this person's video has ended, then my video shows up as a suggested next video to watch. So this one's been bringing me a lot of traffic. I should actually go and thank this person. And then if I scroll back up to the top, I'm going to click on the engagement tab. And this tab is really cool. It gives you the watch time. So it tells you how many hours of watch time you got on certain days here. So I think my highest hours were 25 hours per day and gives you average view duration as well. And like, Likewise, if you click on the different things, it will create its own graph. So let's go back to watch time. Now, this is really cool. It's got something called key moments for audience retention. This is really useful. So for example, this highlighted video here, which is my latest Canon DPP tutorial, I can see this video is 10 minutes long and I can see when it started off here, nearly everyone started watching it and then it started dropping. So by around 25 seconds in, I already lost 25% of the viewers, which could tell me either this video, they weren't interested in it. Maybe they clicked on it by accident or maybe they just kind of wanted to see the intro what it's about or maybe they just decided you know it's a crap video I don't want to see this but then you can see your audience retention so after three minutes I still had 60% so that's really good but normally the rest of these videos are a bit lower than this so this one's doing quite well and then you can see after nine minutes this is around the time I finished and I was doing the outro nearly everybody dropped off and little do they know there was a hidden message right after the credits most people wouldn't have seen that only 14% went right till the end and then if I scroll down again, it gives you like top videos. So once again, it gives you in watch hours, which videos are bringing you how many watch hours. So my Canon DPP beginners tutorial has 384 hours in total that it added to that count. And then top videos by end screen. So this is right at the end of your videos. You can promote your own videos as well by adding some end screens. And this is telling you how many clicks they brought you. And then here you got your top playlists, your top end screen element type, which uh, people use. So normally element types is you can actually choose at the end of your video. Do you put elements where you tell people, okay, here's the best video what I think you should watch, or do you let YouTube decide this is the best video? So normally I do have some of it set for best for viewer and I let YouTube decide, but some of them I choose myself a specific video. So like the beginner's tutorial right at the end, I'll put a card for the intermediate tutorial. So this just tells you which ones they've been clicking on. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you got something called top cards. So during your videos, you can put cards in so if I'm mentioning something in a video like for example a different video I did while I'm speaking I can add a card that will then show up while someone's watching my video and it'll say oh you can click here to watch that video so these are the cards and how many times they've been clicked all right and that's the engagement tab and lastly we've got the audience tab over here this tab is really cool now keep in mind that some of these options will not be instantly available to you I had to wait for a couple of weeks for some of these options even months before they started showing up how it works is YouTube actually needs to collect a considerable amount of data about your users before it can calculate some of these things that I'm going to show you now. For a good couple of months, maybe four months, I did not have this data available. I think this only became available two months ago. If you don't see this, don't panic. It could be because you're still a new channel. You don't have enough videos yet and there's not enough data to compile these reports for you. You'll have a lot of these options, but not all of them. Let me go and show you how this works. So here you've got the audience. So this shows you a graph your returning viewers versus new viewers that's pretty cool I can see that now recently I've got some more returning viewers watching my videos which I'm really happy about but I've also got loads of new viewers watching my videos so the blue line is my new viewers so on this day I had 14 returning viewers and 104 new viewers which is really cool you can kind of see how you're doing over there so if you scroll down a little bit you've got when your viewers are on YouTube now this tool I find super useful this basically tells you when are your 
all viewers on YouTube. So it tells me when I can post my video. It actually recommends when you should post your video on which day at what time. So I used to post my video every weekend on a Friday at 3 a.m. in the morning. And I just thought, you know, it's a good time. 3 a.m. in the morning, I'll post it. Then people wake up. Maybe they'll watch it. Maybe it's a weekend. So on the weekend, I'll watch it. But YouTube said, you know what? We'd actually recommend you to post videos at about 4 p.m. on a Monday. And I've been trying to do that for the last two weeks. And I've noticed that the videos have been growing quite quicker. So I don't know if it's due to that or because uh, I've got more subscribers now. I'm really not sure. But basically, if you scroll down as well, there's some recommendations here. They tell you they recommend if you're uploading your videos weekly, upload it on a Monday at 4 p.m. British summer time. And then if you want to upload daily, they tell you each time for each day that you could upload your videos. Now, here's also watch time from subscribers and non-subscribers. So how much watch time hours are you getting from each group? Then you've got things like age and gender also gives you some statistics, which we'll go into a little bit later on, on that cool graph that's coming up. And then I've got things like top geographies, which countries and top subtitles, which I'll show you in a minute. Let's go over to that cool graph right now, because that's the most interesting part of Google Analytics. So if you're in your channel analytics overview tab, click on see more either here or anywhere really see more here. So if you click on that, it will open up this cool little feature, which is like kind of like a dashboard where you can see all your statistics or your graphs, all the counts and you can filter them out. So this is an excellent reporting tool. In my opinion, you can even download uh, your views and things like that. So here it gives you the first one. I'm going to go over them really quickly because I don't want to bore you to death and this video is already way too long. But basically, this is how it looks. So your first tab is the video tab. It shows you all the videos that you've uploaded or and people have been watching and it shows you how many views each video got, how much total duration, and the average percentage viewed of your video based on this average view duration. Now you can also hide and filter things. So you could add a secondary metric, add view duration, add percentage viewed, more metrics. You can add a ton of other stuff here. You can add likes, dislikes, card clicks, all sorts of things, impressions. You can add whatever you want to this graph and it's really cool. And it also gives each video a different color, top five looks like, and then you can see how those videos were performing. And then the next one is your traffic source. So the next tab, I'm going to jump into and this is telling you where your traffic's coming from. So this is basically the same what we went over through earlier, but in a lot more detail. It tells you that, for example, YouTube search, I've got nearly 5000 views from YouTube searches. This is how many watch hours. This is my average view duration, how many impressions, how many click through rates. So from YouTube searches, I'm actually doing quite well. I'm getting 9.3% click through rate. And likewise, it also gives you this graph for the top few videos. All right, up next, you've got something called the geography tab. This one's cool because it tells you which countries people are watching your videos from. So yes, I'd like to say thank you so much. Much love to my countries that are watching my videos. I'm really shocked that my videos actually went around the world like this. USA, you're doing great, man. I must say it's really cool to have you guys. And thank you so much for watching my videos. This graph here tells you a breakdown of how many views you got from which country. Now, as you can see, we've got Poland here with 33 views. I'm pretty sure that's my mother watching my YouTube videos because she lives in Poland and she's probably the only one that watches them. So that is also that and that gives you a graph up here for the top few countries as well so you can see how many views you got on which day from which country. And it's really cool. I, I love this. It breaks it down so nicely for you. Likewise, you can add some secondary merits and you can also break it down like filter it by watch time, average view duration and so on. Then next up, you've got your viewer age. So this just shows you the age of the people that watch your YouTube videos. Now this won't have everybody's age because some people don't actually set up YouTube accounts. They just maybe browse it anonymously or they don't log in, but it will tell you the people's age that watch your videos. So as you can see, uh, between the ages of 25 to over 65 and plus, I've got some viewers. Youngsters, come on, where are you, man? I've got zero views here from you guys. I guess I'm becoming boring and old. So that's how this works. This shows you how to split it by age group. So then you can kind of see who your audience are. And then if I click on the viewer gender, you've got here who what, what gender watches your videos. So you've got male and female and come on ladies, start watching my videos. You'll learn how to do cool stuff on the computer, how to edit videos, photos. So do click that subscribe button ladies and tell your friends all about Dom's Media Zone. <laughs> so this is quite interesting. I don't actually know what you can get from this because it doesn't really matter. Just produce the videos you produce. And then over here, you've got the date tab 
which basically tells you how many views and how many watch time hours and average view durations you got on a date. And I think this shows you top 500, but you can use an export to view up to 500. So you can go 500 days back. Okay, up next is the subscription status. So over here, this tells you how many views you got from people that are not subscribed, how many views from people that are subscribed. So obviously not everyone that watches your videos is gonna subscribe because let's be honest, sometimes I also browse YouTube. I found a cool video, I watch what I need to watch and then I just leave. So you don't always subscribe, but it is nice when somebody does. And then over here, here jumping next to is the subscription source so this one's very cool because it tells you on which day how many people subscribed and then it also tells you how many people unsubscribed so over here you can see for example on this day let's take this day so five people subscribed from my youtube watch page and then straight from my youtube channel somebody unsubscribed so somebody went and had a look at the videos i've got probably decided you know what these aren't for me i'm unsubscribing and then you can see here so i've gained two lost one gained six lost one and and so on you're gonna lose subscribers you can't please everybody and it's not gonna be interesting for everybody neither so that's understandable so this is a really cool way to gauge if you're gaining or losing subscribers over time and it also tells you which pages they subscribe from and where they unsubscribe from so for example there was one closed account so automatically it got unsubscribed and let's go jump into the playlists now the playlists tab basically shows you your playlists and how they're doing so it tells you for example how many times a viewer clicked videos from a playlist which means somebody actually maybe saved the playlist or went in the playlist and opened the video straight from the playlist and how many views you got and average view duration and watch times so this will just give you more insight into how your playlists are doing and which ones are popular so now as you can see my most popular videos and my most popular playlists have all been about dpp tutorials which is really cool i enjoy dpp i enjoy making videos about them i just hope i don't run out of ideas because there's only so much you can do about dpp but i will keep trying and then over here if we go to the next tab you've got something called the device type and here it tells you what device people are watching your youtube videos on so you've got something like 7900 views on the computer 5000 on a mobile phone there's some people on the tablet tv even gaming consoles and also tells you how many hours and your average view duration up next you've got something called the youtube product which i have no idea what this is so i'm not even going to talk about this then next one you've got video type which all my videos are uploads i'm not sure what other video type you can have so these two i don't really use and then lastly you can pick other ones here so you can do like the operating system of people using as an example so i can actually see that majority of my viewers use windows this could be useful if i'm doing tutorials and i need to tell people to click certain buttons but i've got a windows machine and i'm not sure what what it is on a macintosh for example but i've still got 2000 viewers so maybe i should research what the shortcut is on a macintosh and add that to my video which i'm kind of guilty of not doing at the moment but yeah so you've got things like the smart tv amazon fire linux blah 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 i don't even know some of these what is tizen please let me know in the comments and you've got kai os and things i've never even heard of but i'm sure they're pretty good and people do use them so that's what you can view on here as well likewise in analytics you can change the number of days so if i was interested only in the last seven days who watched my videos on what devices i can see here that these were the devices that were used all right and that's basically the overview of the analytics and the youtube studio in a nutshell i did go through it quite quickly i know it can be a lot of information but as you click around as you grow a bit as a channel you'll have lots of time to look into these and you'll learn how to use them effectively and efficiently it can help you basically steer you in the right direction show you what people are interested in what they're not interested in help you improve each video as you go along also the comments help a lot i really do appreciate when people comment then i know where i'm going right I know where i'm going wrong i can always try to improve for the future so as always thank you so much for watching this overview and tour i hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions do leave them down in the comments and thank you for watching all right and thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed that i hope that it taught you something and that it helps you out with your youtube channel in the future if you did like this video do give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to this channel i'm going to try to do many more videos like this in the future and if you have any questions do leave them down in my comment i try to do my best to answer all your questions that you might have thanks for watching stay safe take care and i'll catch you next time